Hi guys, welcome to my first video in my new studio. Um, today, however, is going to be a different video. Usually I post about goofy things or things having to do with my plants. Um, but I decided that I want to open up a journey to share with you guys, whether you know me personally or you're watching this and you have no idea who I am, to shed some light on something that I've been struggling with um, for the last 13 years of my life. So I have what is called uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is also known as PCOS, and many women have it. Um, there's tons of different side effects that come along with it. Not sure what causes it. There's no cure for it. There's things you can do to lessen the side effects. Um, a huge thing of which is losing weight, which right now through COVID and being in a comfortable relationship, I've gained like 30 pounds in the last year and a half. But before that, I lost almost 90 pounds. And my driving force, other than just feeling better in my own clothes, was hoping to alleviate the side effects of this disease or this syndrome. Um, but unfortunately, losing weight didn't change the side effects at all. Uh, I wouldn't change it for the world though because I you know, feel better at the time when I was less, weighed less than I am now, feeling better than ever and I'm still nowhere near the size that I used to be. But anyways, the biggest side effects that a lot of women have with this is infertility, um, anxiety, depression, and causing anxiety and depression is the side effect of excess facial and body hair. So, um, of which I very much have. So, um, what I'm gonna be tracking along this journey with you is my uh, process of getting electrolysis. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's, um, sometimes people think it's the same as laser hair removal, but it's not, it's different. Um, I've gotten laser hair removal before. Um, it didn't do anything, in fact, it made my facial hair worse. Um, Electrolysis is a process in which they use a very small needle that's the size of a pore that's in your face, and they use electricity to zap the hair fo follicle, and it kills it all together, and it doesn't ever grow back. Um, it's a very slow process, um, and but I'm creating this video because today, April 1st, 2021, is day one that I started getting electrolysis. Um, this isn't the first time ever though. In 2019, I started getting it, electrolysis. Um, I only started having it done for a couple months, but then I relocated to another state and then COVID hit. So for like the last year and a half, I haven't had any treatments whatsoever. and. Um, nothing changed with my facial hair anyways in that short span of time, but it also just grew, continued to, to grow back. Um, and so I just wanted to record this journey to not only shed light on PCOS itself, but just it's been a huge cause of why if you know me personally, this is just for people that know me personally, many of you might have noticed that I'm somewhat of a reserved, uh, recluse, um, I don't know, choose any word that you want type of a person because all I can think of is this. When I'm standing next to somebody, when somebody drops over at my house unexpectedly, um, when someone's standing too close, all I can think is, can they see my facial hair? Can they see my beard? Uh, and if you haven't seen it, it's probably because I'm doing a good job hiding it. <laughs> Shave my face, 
every single day. Now that I work from home, it's been nice because I can give my face a break and I don't shave my face every day. When I used to work in, the, in an office or when I used to go to school, whatever it was, shave my face every single morning and it just, it's time consuming. It rips up my skin um, and I just, um, I'm trying to work towards not having to even think about that anymore. Getting up and just waking up and going out and about into the world and doing things without having to fix my face first is like foreign to me. I don't even remember what that's like. So honestly with this pandemic and having to wear my mask all over the place, it's been a huge weight off my shoulders as morbid as that sounds because of how horrid this pandemic has been. Putting my mask on and just going out and about grocery shopping, whatever, I don't even have to think about it because it's covered up. Um, so I just wanted to, first of all, if you know me personally and you've noticed any element of that about me of um, kind of seeming like I'm distant or like I'm disinterested or not really sure what's going on, that's been one of the main causes, the main reasons behind that. And I'm working towards fixing it and I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this for, um, I mean, there's women out there that have PCOS that are like influencers now that have let, just said, you know, F this, this is who I am. I'm beautiful. I'm going to let it grow out and let the world see it. And all the more power to those women because that's just wonderful that they choose to do that and that they have the confidence to do that. Um, that's just not something that I want to do for myself though. I mean, I, I, I want to go out and about, but I want to do it with, without a five o'clock shadow at 8 a.m. <laughs> so, um, and I have to laugh about it because if I don't laugh, I'm gonna cry. And trust me, I've cried over this. I can't even tell you how many times. Um, I just keep looking down at my wrist because I have an Apple Watch now, so I'm seeing how my view is because I have the camera in my watch. Anyways, so I'm going to be tracking along my journey of doing the rest of this electrolysis. I have a huge goal of having as much of this beard as possible gone before my big wedding. I told my electrologist during my consultation that if I could walk down the aisle on my wedding day and my beard isn't a thought in my mind, I said, that's just, I can't even imagine how that would feel. So, but that might not end up happening because I'm having a realistic, um, I'm having realistic expectations about this process because of the fact that my facial hair and my body hair is caused by this PCOS. It's such a hormonal situation. It's caused by hormonal imbalances. And so my estrogen and my testosterone, it's all imbalanced. Testosterone equals male equals hair. And that's why I have it. Um, so because of that, um, there could be fluctuations in how the hair goes away. Some of it might come back, some of it might not come back, and then hope, but we're hoping that eventually it gets to a point where it doesn't come back at all. Or if it does, I only have to go back and get a touch-up session once, twice, three times a year, which that's nothing compared to the ways that I have to take care of it now. And, um, so I just want to be upfront, intimate um, with the people I know, with the people I don't know. If you can connect to this or you, because you have PCOS or even if you don't have PCOS, but you have facial hair, which is also, or body hair, which is also known as hirsutism, I feel you, sister. Um, you know, another side effect is ovarian cysts, which I do have, but they're not, of any size that's a concern right now um you know some women's biggest struggle with this is the infertility 
I'm not even going to get into that because I don't want to. Um, my biggest um, focus here with this journey that I'm going to take you guys on is the facial hair element of it and the anxiety and depressional elements of it that it causes, that it has caused for me and how hopefully it all is just going to go up from here. Um, I keep myself grounded with it by reminding myself always that other people have things way worse. You know, it's not going to kill me. It's not, uh, it's, it's debilitating in a, an emotional and mental way, but it's not something where I'm, you know, counting down the last days of my life because of something I was diagnosed with that I can't be saved of which it's kind of morbid, but I have to think about those things to keep me grounded. It's all, there is always somebody that has something worse, so you need to always be grateful for what you have and for what you don't have. And so what I hope to continue sharing with this journey is my continued progress with my electrolysis. As of right now, I have one session per week um, scheduled through like the beginning of May and then after that we'll just continue to schedule another chunk of time probably on a weekly to two week basis and some of these range from an hour to two hours to three to four hours at a time it just depends on how long I can stand getting it done because it is painful but it's not horrid at least not for me because maybe my pain tolerance is different than other people but it is it is um, a little bit painful, plus it's irritating to the skin. Um, and we'll just go from there. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me so that, like I said, if um, you can see the progress that I'm hoping for, you can um, root for me, you can root for somebody you know that has PCOS, um, you can relate to it yourself if you have this problem. Um, there's a million reasons why, but I just felt the need to just be open about this and be very vulnerable and, you know, I could be mortified and embarrassed and just, oh God, this person's going to be watching this and this person's going to know this about me now, but I really don't care at this point. I'm 33. I've been dealing with this since I was 20 years old. And... It's just part of me. It's who I am. And, um, but I, that doesn't mean I have to live with it forever. And if there's solutions that science has created, I'm going to take advantage of that. And so I am, and I'm going to share the journey with you guys. And, um, I was just going to show you a little close up. So my face right now is about, um, I shouldn't be touching this cause I just got electrolysis today. Um, I shaved my face at, uh, uh, maybe seven or eight o'clock last night and my appointment today was at three o'clock PM. Um, and she only focused kind of right here on this area because it's the heaviest area, but, um, you can see all this stubble all along here, my chin. This is the area she kind of worked on today. And see on that side, and then here's the best part, all down there. And so that's like a day. Sometimes when I'm like being comfortable at my house, I let it go two, three, and four days. And it's like I'm having a beard competition with my husband. So that's that for today. I don't know, um, I'm gonna share the good days just as much as the bad. Um, and by bad, I mean my emotions fluctuate like this and I'm, I'm trying to work on that, but um, this has been such a overwhelming controlling force over my life the last 13 years. And um, so I'm gonna just I'm going to try to work through this and I want to bring you guys along with me um, for support and knowing that I'm supporting you too if you are 
also suffering from this or if you know somebody that is. So that's that. You know that about me now. <laughs> I can't take it back. I'm not going to take it back. And um, be kind. Take care of yourself. And you never know what the person walking down the street next to you is going through. So just be nice to each other. And um, that's it. We'll see you in the next video. My next appointment is next week. And I might do a video every appointment. I might do a video once a week. We'll see. It's just going to depend on how this progresses or how I'm feeling on certain days. And we'll go from there. Bye, guys.